What if a man from a long forgotten familia had been put back into modern day in a new familia? One born of both dungeon and surface. What if this man, Bell Cronell, was the fallen hero that would one day save us all? What if this was a familia myth? Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I would like to give a quick shout out to our members all listed here. And if you yourself do want to become a member, consider clicking the join button or alternatively scrolling down to the link down below. Also, I would like to mention that we do currently have merch. Link will also be in the description. And without further ado, roll that intro. Months had passed since the initial dungeon incident where Bell had after left, but not everything has been well. Bell's journey is undisclosed as most haven't heard him, heard from him, or even seen him. And Auraria isn't really in the best condition itself. You could actually quite probably say it's the opposite of okay. It's pretty bad. The Apollo Familia has not been sitting idly by. They have slowly been manipulating the strings to become the strongest Familia, at least within the city. So Auraria is in chaos to say the very least. Let me elaborate on what I mean about this. Apollo's Familia had been challenging other Familia with the confidence of Booster Gold in his speedo. They had been taking over other familias, challenging them to battles, and in the case of them winning, the god would disband the familia and all of the members would join Apollo's. The gods then themselves would serve under Apollo's familia. Some gods themselves who did not have familia were obviously immune to this. But gods like Ganesha and even some higher gods like Hephaestus and even Loki had suffered to this. They had believed that, oh, Apollo at most had some level 5 or 4s. But they had gotten to cocky. They hadn't realized that Apollo had been challenging quite the few familia even from outside of Auraria. Meaning he had stockpiled quite a few and had actually a few level 5 hunters, or at least a few level 5 adventurers. And when it came down to it, the Ganesha Familia had completely lost, just like every single one before them. Loki, on the other hand, took a different bet. Obviously, Apollo had known if he challenged Loki outright to all that, she would deny it, and she had the sword princess on her side so he couldn't take any chances he get as many level fives on his side first so he came up with a strategy all the level fives he had currently under him versus all the level fives loki currently had under her an excuse for those that go over the numbers since loki currently had more at least that's what she thought she would accept basically withholding Finn and obviously Eyes, the Sword Princess, from the battle. But other people like Bet and many more members who were level 4 to 5 had been participating and as far as they knew there would only be a few. But they had quite the number of level 5s and had ended up overwhelming the Loki Familia, with the Loki only having Finn and Eyes by her side. As I said, Araria is a battleground. At this point, Ishtar is still in control of the Red Light District, 
Freya somehow being in control of Babel, and Uranus ruling over the dungeon area and guild properties. So these are currently the powers, apart from the Apollo Familia that is. They're trying to take over as much of Auraria as they possibly could. But it's all for naught. When we would see Bell, we'd see the torture he had been through. He had faced many a dangerous monster. He hadn't realized how bad the rest of the world had gotten around Auraria. Dungeons weren't common apart from those with big bosses, and in those, stronger monsters weren't that common themselves. But many small villages and towns had been completely wiped out since they didn't have adventurers above level 3, and had never expected monsters that strong to come out of their local dungeons. But they did. Bell would take on many a dungeon on his own, and would realize that there are monsters stronger than him, ones that aren't even that high level dungeon monsters. He would realize he has a long way to go. But in this time, his animalistic instinct had gone up a lot. But this time, unlike the first, he had been able to control it, use it to his advantage, to find his bastard of a grandfather, Zeus. And when he eventually did, he was expecting to burst in, demanding be released from his familia. But what transpired was a pretty big difference. Bell was tired. He had made it to Zeus's front door when he had collapsed. Hermes had finally broken and given Bell the location of Zeus's hideout. And what followed was one of Hermes guild members, which we know as Asfei. Asfei is more or less Hermes head honcho. She had been instructed to follow Bell while invisible after Hermes had dropped the location. Bell had not been in the right state of mind, but he didn't want to oppose Bell's will. The remainder of the steps that had been left by Bell a mere few inches, if you would say so, had he been pushed forward by Asfe and he had made it to the door. Hermes would hear a knock as a slam against the door, you could say, as Asfe had pushed and Bell just that little bit further. Zeus would open the door to see a bruised and broken grandson. Even against his better judgment of helping his grandson, helping him after what he did, he couldn't help himself. After everything Hermes had told him about his grandson reawakening the Argonaut tree, somewhat changing it for himself, he is laying right in front of him, helpless and beaten. Zeus, out of the kindness of his heart, or at least what he had thought so of, would help his grandson. And what would come to fruition is a civilized conversation. After Bell had come back up, he would thank his grandfather, surprisingly not even being mad at him. They had a conversation about what happened in the dungeon initially, since Zeus had disappeared after finding out Bell had slaughtered entire familias and even their gods. But what he would hear next would scar him and grow a hatred towards some of the other gods themselves. Bell would tell him it was a knight. He had risen through the ranks of familias. At the time, he was around level 4. He had commanded a few squads as his grandfather had known. But what had come to fruition is all the lower familia that were helping the he uh, the Zeus and Hera familias had for some reason rebelled. They thought of Bell as a monster kin, someone who would bring them to ruin. So they had tried to kill them. Unlike what Zeus had thought initially of Bell being the reason for his mother's death, it had actually been she had been caught in crossfire. Not by Bell's attacks, but one similar from his. She had not necessarily died to one of the familiar's traps, but a monster, a vampiric monster, since they had been on the 18th floor. Zeus at this point was questioning his resolve. The entire reason he had abandoned everything is because 
Most of his familia had been slaughtered by Bell that night. The rest of them dispersed across the world, including Bell himself. But he can't come back. No more status updates, no more anything. He's living a peaceful life. And what he could hear, Bell has people he cares about. He has friends in the Loki familia and had even fallen in love with the goddess, something Zeus had never thought possible. What he had heard from Hermes is that Bell had a hatred towards the gods, but what it seems is he only wanted revenge for his mother. Zeus would understand and tell Bell to lift his shirt one last time, and without Bell even questioning it, Zeus would release Bell from his status. Bell would start feeling bloodlust overwhelm him. Zeus had expected this to happen. When he was released from the contract, his vampiric side would start taking over. But no, Bell had been able to resist it. And Miss As Asfe, <laughs> Asfe had for not released her invisibility, thinking that Zeus was in danger. But it wasn't. Somehow, Bell was able to resist it and even sense her presence. He would call her out and <laughs> she would reveal herself and reveal Lord Hermes doing within Bell reaching here. Zeus would thank Asfe and she was about to be on her way, but Bell would ask for her to accompany him back. But she would say that, is he sure he wants to come back? Araria isn't the greatest place right now, as they would explain everything. Zeus would tell his grandson to rush ahead. They could have a family conversation another time. He'll be here, waiting. And Bell would need to go swoop in to save the day one last time. But yeah, that's gonna be it, guys. This is how we're gonna be starting off season two of Danmachi in this What If I Really Do. Hope y'all did enjoy all this. Um, as I said prior, um, I really enjoy this series. I really enjoy making this series, and I will be finishing this series. But it's not necessarily going to end the way y'all think. So this is basically a quick announcement. Um, I will only be doing till the end of my version of season two, maybe a portion of season three, but I won't be touching on anything to do with the Xenos quite yet because I'm waiting for season four to release for I don't want to be giving any manga spoilers. So if y'all see me avoid it for a while after the movie comes out, that's why. So yeah, um, thank you to the boy Steak for editing these videos. Thank you to the Dragon Lord for creating our intros and outros. And without further ado, this has been Boy Six. Peace. One, two, three, let's go. Subscribe for more. Yada yada does it.